So, Coach, I I'm wondering if uh, you miss playing the game. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think anybody who played basketball, professional basketball, missed it. I mean, it, it was the best job in the world. It mm -hmm. was really the best job in the world to be able to be an adult and play a sport that you loved as a kid, and now you're getting compensated for it, and you're getting to travel, you're getting to be, go to un unbelievable places and see cities and meet people that you would never in your wildest dream ever imagine that you could do. Um, and, you know, again, in professional sports, you always want to talk about having success. Mm -hmm. I was blessed to be on teams that had a lot of success. So mm -hmm. there, there's a win on top of win, you know, to be able to play for as long as I did. I was looking, Coach, just back at, at that time when you were there with the Blazers at just how good that team was. Mm -hmm. So you got everybody's best shot when they came to Portland. I'm curious if there was a, a, an opponent, a player, that got on, under your skin, that just got on your nerves every time he came here. I don't know if there was one individual player. I mean, I think, um, you know, we had some built-in rivalries. Like, Seattle was always a very competitive, hard-fought. Gary was always trash-talking. And, <laughs> and there was a lot. And then there was obviously a lot of the players on that team. You know, they had, they had young, you know, Kemp. They had young superstars. Oh, that yeah. Just, that rivalry just was built up. It was mm -hmm. built up. So there was always jawing back and forth, you know, about who was the better team and among the players when the game went on and so that that was kind of built in and then obviously the Lakers you know whenever we played the Lakers because they were they were the king they were the king of the crown right yeah they, they, everybody wanted to knock the Lakers off and we had our window we were really a competitive team a championship caliber team mm -hmm. and so it was always for that reason there's always Laker fans in Portland when they always <laughs> showed up you didn't see them during the year and then the Lakers showed up you always see these people with Lakers gear like hey wait a minute the Blazers showed on last week <laughs> that's what <laughs> you heard them, Lakers fans you mentioned uh, Gary Payton was was he like the king of trash talk was that was that the best trash talker you saw mm -hmm. out there or were there others that that were better than him at that I don't know if the one was better than other. I mean, they had a lot of guys. I mean, <laughs> Tim Hardaway was a trash talker. I mean, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, there's a lot. During that time, you know, I think the sport, uh, and compared to today, there was trash talkers back then, but it was done in a kind of nicer way. I remember my rookie year, but I, wasn't, I didn't guard him. Larry Bird, mm -hmm. uh, we played him in the Boston Garden, and I was in the paint, and somehow the ball was swung around. And it was, Larry had caught it, and I was running out to Larry, Larry Bird, and you know, you know his famous motion. He just kind of shot it. As I was running, I said, "Too late, rookie." You know, oh, that's what he's <laughs> too too late, rookie. And obviously, it went down. And uh, I just shook my head and ran down to the other man. <laughs> that was like your introduction. That was my to intro the league, to the huh? league. It's like, "Welcome, rookie." You know, you know who I am, Larry Legend. That's who I am. <laughs> too late. <laughs> Hello everyone, I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos, so please subscribe to this page, and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.